All right, hey, Honors Chemistry. I kind of wanted to walk you through Unit 6 Worksheet Number 3, which is representing ions and formula units. This is going to be for ionic formula. So either you're going to have simple ionic compound, transition metal ionic compounds, or polyatomic ion. And the first three are actually each one of each example. So in the first column, you're going to draw the ions and how many of each you're going to eventually need. Um, in the second column, you're going to draw out a connecting uh, of that structure, or you could write out the formula. And then the third column, you're going to put the name. Now, something that you have to remember, and a couple of mistakes that happened on the quiz, were when do I put Roman numerals? And so I wanted to start with, if I'm an element in the middle of the periodic table, I'm most likely going to need a Roman numeral. The purpose of the Roman numeral is because these elements have or form multiple charge elements that form multiple charge elements that form multiple charges that's not going to be group one or group two these elements tend to form plus one or plus two so i'm not going to need a roman numeral if it's lithium beryllium sodium magnesium potassium calcium rubidium strontium cesium barium francium or or rad radium um also aluminum is not going to need a roman numeral Zinc and silver are not going to need Roman numerals, and cadmium's also in that business too. All of these do not need Roman numerals because they only form one charge. So zinc is plus two, silver is plus one, cadmium is also plus two. Those are ions that show up in the transition metal block, but they only form one charge. Again, the main purpose for the Roman numeral are for elements that form multiple charges. I'm going to ask the question when <coughs> naming, is it a transition metal? And then I have to figure out from there. So I'm going to put that for the name. I'm going to put transition metal question mark. And if it's a yes, I need Roman numerals. If it's a no, it's good to go. Okay, so in this first one, I have calcium 2 plus and bromide minus 1. You could look on the group numbers in the periodic table for those charges. Um, it already has the answer here that I needed 1, 2 plus, and 2 minuses, and the structure looks like this. If I didn't know that, I could do the crisscross method to prove that to kind of help you out. 1 Ca, 2 Brs. Ca2 plus, plus, mi plus 1, plus 1. That's going to equal to zero. Now, calcium, is that a transition metal? If I look on the periodic table, calcium is in group two. It is not in the middle where it's bracketed off as transition metal. It only forms one charge. So I'm going to call this just calcium bromide with no Roman numerals. Now let's do the next one. The next one is very similar to the first one, two plus and minus one. So Fe two plus and CO minus one, if I want, I could do the crisscross method to figure out its formula. I'm gonna need two CLs, one Fe, FeCl2. If I wanted to draw that, I could do one circle with two plus, and I'm gonna need two CL minuses, just like on top here. So I could draw it and do two plus, and the two minuses. Now my question is, is the metal a transition metal? If I look at my periodic table, Fe is in the middle. And it's not one of these three exceptions, so since Fe is in the middle, I'm going to need a Roman numeral for its charge. And the charge is 2 plus, so I'm going to need Roman numeral 2. 2. So this is going to be iron, Roman numeral 2, chloride. And don't forget the way that we name the second element gets an IDE ending, except in number three, which we have a polyatomic ion. This is potassium, K plus. And if I look on the periodic table, I'm gonna ask myself the question, is it a transition metal? Nope, it's in group one. So later on, I'm not gonna need a Roman numeral. SO4 two minus, look, I'm gonna have multiple atoms here. This is sulfate. It's a polyatomic ion. And it's going to be one of the polyatomic ions you're going to have to memorize. This is polyatomic. And I could do the crisscross method with this one, SO4, 2 minus. This one's a little bit simpler. I bring down one. I only need one SO4. I bring down two. 
it's going to be K2SO4. So I'm going to need two K pluses. And I could draw my SO4 like this. This is S, and then I have four O's. And overall, it forms a minus two charge. And so if I wanted to name this, I'm not going to need a Roman numeral. It's going to be potassium. And I name the polyatomic ion as is sulfate. In getting you started on drawing the next one and kind of helping you out, aluminum is not a transition metal, not going to need a Roman numeral. And the way that I'll draw NO3, which is named nitrate, it's got a minus one charge, I'll draw an N and three O's and probably put a dotted line and make it minus one. And so now I'm going to leave it up to you to finish the rest of this. You'll see that I'll need more than one nitrate for the aluminum, and I'll probably need it to be, I'll do Al3 plus NO3 minus. I'm going to need one Al, but three NO3s. As you saw in another video, if I need more than one polyatomic ion, I use parentheses. So I want you to finish the rest of number four, and the rest of four through ten, and I'm going to get us started then on number 11. You could pause the video here to do 4 through 10. And then when you're ready to do 11, you could put the video back on. But now I'm going to walk us through number 11. So for number 11, in my slideshow, I did make a note that I have a typo. In your worksheets, it says 6 and 2. It really should be 7 and 3. And you'll see why. I made a quick typo in the... In making this worksheet so fix that so it's seven and three and so for 11 through 15 it says state the total number of atoms and the total number of ions in the compound so if you notice there is still the columns of ions formula unit and name but you don't have to draw them so you're not going to have to draw the particles if you look in questions eight through ten i already gave you the formulas for them so you don't have to worry about them same thing here i'm sure i just want the formula in the box so i have silver and chromate if I look on the periodic table, I'm going to look for silver. Silver, I wrote on the top. It is a, it's in the lump of transition metals, but it's the one that's the exception that doesn't need a Roman numeral. And so silver is Ag plus 1. And that's why there's no Roman numeral in the name, because silver only forms one charge. Again, and I say it again, Roman numerals are for transition metals that form more than one charge. And now chromate is a polyatomic ion. If you look on your polyatomic ion sheet, it's CrO4, 2 minus. I could do the crisscross method, plus 1, CrO4, 2 minus. I need 1 CrO4 and 2 AGs. So that is my formula, Ag2, CrO4. There are two Ag pluses that's needed for one CrO4 two minus. Oops. And I'm drawing circles on them like up in the previous questions. So that is why we have one, two, three ions in the formula. But if I want atoms, I'm gonna count all the total possible atoms. Well, there's four O's, there's one Cr, and there's two Ag's. 4 plus 1 plus 2 is 7. There is a difference between the number of ions in solution, ions are going to, or ions in general. Ions are going to be the Ag+, plus, Ag+, plus, and the CrO4, 2 minus. This stays together as a whole ion, okay? So all of that stays together as a whole ion. This is the chromate ion. It stays together as one thing. And these are the two silver ions they are separate and break apart into their own ions as well. So I have one, two, and three. I have three ions in total, but I have seven atoms all together. I'm gonna do one more so you get the idea as an example. So I'm gonna jump all the way down to calcium sulfate. So calcium, if I look on the periodic table, calcium is a group two element, and that's why it doesn't need a Roman numeral, it only forms one charge, and it's not part of the transition metal uh, part of the table. So calcium forms two plus. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion, and we saw that in the previous page. It's SO4, two minus. If I were to do the crisscross method, I'd get Ca2, 
SO4 to. But remember, I need to have the simplest formula, and both of these have two in them. So I could actually simplify this to just CaSO4. You could also note that plus two plus minus two is equal to zero. The sum of the charges needs to equal zero. So I only needed one of each. Here's a calcium two plus, and then I'll draw sulfate again, like this. And I'll put a dotted line for two minus. Now, if I want to count how many ions there are, there's one calcium and one sulfate. There are two ions. There's a calcium ion and a sulfate ion. That's it. There's only those two ions. But for atoms, that's a little bit of a different story. There's one Ca, there's one S, and there's four O's. So four, five, six atoms total. So for questions 12 through 14, you're going to do the same thing now where I figure out what the, each individual ions are and write the formula, and then I should be able to count ions and atoms. Don't forget that polyatomic ions stick together. Polyatomic ions stick together as one ion. I could have multiple polyatomic ions. If you look at number eight, there are two NO2s. So this would have one Mg2 plus and two NO2 minuses. So this is three ions. This one is Zn2 plus and CO3 two minus. Those are just two ions. And then this one has three Na pluses and one PO4 three minus. This has one, two, three, four ions in total. But counting the atoms, I count all of the subscripts all together. So I want you to use this information now to answer questions 12, 13, and 14, and you will definitely have to know this for your future unit test. Future unit test is going to give you an example where it says how many atoms and how many ions are in this formula. So make sure you know how to do that. It's going to be very important later on in the year. If you have any other questions or concerns about naming and writing ionic formula, these are all the different ionic formulas you're going to need, or counting atoms and ions, please see me in class and ask me any questions that you need to. Otherwise, I would like you to finish worksheet number three, and you will need to know this information later on this week.